Hello, and welcome to the Quick Start Guide for Arc Nova. In this game, players will plan and build modern scientifically managed zoos. You will balance creating an attractive zoo with conservation efforts. In this video, we will go over setup and the rules of play to get started quickly. This is not meant to be a comprehensive rules guide, but you will learn enough to get playing. Any additional clarifications can be found in the included rulebook. First, place the main board in the center of the table. Both sides are functionally identical, and we'll be using this side for the video. Then, place the brake marker on the space of the brake track that matches the number of players in the game. We'll be setting up for a two-player game, so we'll place the marker here. Shuffle the nine yellow bonus tiles and randomly place one on each of the four blank bonus spaces on the board. Any unused bonus tiles are returned to the box. Shuffle the zoo cards and place the deck face down here. Deal six cards face down to the spaces on the board. Place the two organizers next to the game board to act as a general supply. You can reference the rulebook for a suggestion on how to organize the tokens and tiles. Place the association board next to the game board, making sure that there is enough room above and below the board for a row of cards. Put a partner zoo and a university of each kind on the matching spaces of the association board. Shuffle the base conservation project cards and keep them face down next to the association board. Reveal three cards from the deck and place them below the association board. If you are playing with four players, reveal another card and place it at the end. Shuffle the final scoring cards and place them face down next to the association board. Each player will take the counters, tokens, and association workers of a single color. In a two-player game, take six tokens of an unused color and place them on the association board. Three of these tokens will go on the left column of the donation area like this. Then, place one token on the left space of the leftmost conservation card, another on the second space of the middle card, and the final token on the last space of the rightmost card. These spaces will be blocked for the whole game. Randomly determine a start player, and turns will proceed clockwise. Distribute a zoo map to each player. For your first game, it is recommended for all players to use map A. In future games, maps are dealt randomly, so players will have different map configurations. Then, each player will do the following. Take a set of five action cards and place one card on each of the five spaces below your zoo map with the blue side face up. Make sure animals cards is in the left space below the one. The other four cards are randomly distributed. Place one counter on the zero space of the conservation track represented by the green spaces with the shield symbol. Place another counter on the one space of the reputation track in the center of the board. And place the last counter on the appeal track symbolized by the ticket symbol. The first player in turn order places their counter on the zero space and the next player on the one space. If you are playing with three or four players, they will place their counter on the next available spaces, two and three in turn order. Now, place seven tokens on each of the spaces along the left edge of your map. The rest of the tokens are kept nearby as a supply. Place one association worker on the notepad area of your zoo map and the remaining three workers on the three designated spaces below. Place 25 money on your notepad, draw two final scoring cards and keep them secret. Every map has a special ability listed on the bottom. Map A's ability is to start the game with a size three enclosure here. Then draw eight zoo cards and choose four of them to keep and discard the other four face up to the discard pile. Once all players have chosen their cards, flip the six zoo cards in the display. The game is now ready to begin. There are no rounds in Arc Nova. Instead, players take turns in order until the end of the game is triggered. Occasionally, a break will occur and will temporarily pause the game for administration and income phases. The end of the game is triggered when a player's conservation counter and appeal counter are in the same space or if they pass one another. On your turn, you will take a single action by selecting one of the five action cards below your zoo map. To indicate which action you are taking, slide the card down slightly. The strength of the action is dictated by the number above the card. The further the card is to the right, the stronger the action will be. Once you've completed your action, move that action card to the beginning of the row and slide the cards over until all cards are below a number. Initially, all cards begin at level one, as indicated by the number in the upper left-hand corner and the blue background. Throughout the game, you may receive a card upgrade reward represented by this symbol. This allows you to choose one of your action cards and flip it to the level two side with the purple background. The action is now more powerful. There are four upgrade rewards available in the game, which means you can at most upgrade four of your action cards. Now let's look at the different actions. The cards action allows you to add more cards to your hand. First, move the break token two spaces as indicated on the card. Then draw cards according to the strength of the action and follow the chart on the card. If the strength is one, for example, you would draw one card from the deck and then discard one card. The card you can discard can be any card in your hand, including the card you just drew. When you activate a strength five cards action, you can draw three cards and discard one, or you can snap. Snapping means taking any one card from the face-up display into your hand. With a level two cards action, you break two as usual, 
But now, when you draw cards, you can either draw from the top of the deck, or a face-up card within the reputation range as indicated by your counter. In this example, the red player activates a Strength 3 action card and chooses to draw two. They choose to draw one card from the top of the deck and the other from the display. They can choose the first or second card because the reputation counter has reached the second card. Also note that you can snap starting at Strength 3. At the end of your turn, slide the cards down to fill any empty spaces and draw cards from the deck to fill in any remaining spaces. With the build action, you can build a single building with the maximum size of the strength of the action. So, with a strength 1 action, you can build a size 1 building, and up to a size 5 building with the 5 strength action. The buildings cost 2 money per space that it takes up. Enclosures provide space for your animals, pavilions increase your appeal by 1 immediately when built, and kiosks provide money during the break and must be built at least 3 spaces away from any other kiosk. With a strength 3 build action, you can build this size 3 enclosure. Pay 6 money to the supply and place the enclosure on your map. Every new building must be placed adjacent to an already placed building. Place enclosures with the number side up to indicate that it is empty. If a building covers a yellow symbol, you immediately gain the depicted bonus. Most of the bonuses are self-explanatory, but I do want to point out some important ones. This symbol means you can upgrade one of your action cards by flipping it over. This symbol increases your reputation on the reputation track. And this symbol lets you draw one card from the display within your reputation range. You can reference the included icon overview sheet if you are unsure what a bonus provides. There are also three special enclosures that can be built, a petting zoo, a reptile house, and a large bird aviary. You can only have one of each in your zoo, and the last two can only be built with an upgraded level two build action. The level two action also allows you to build multiple buildings on a single turn, as long as the total size of all the buildings is equal to or less than the strength of the action. Additionally, it allows you to build on certain spaces of your zoo with this symbol. The animal's action allows you to play animal cards from your hand to empty enclosures in your zoo. The strength of the action determines how many animals you can play according to the chart on the card. With the strength 4 action, you can play one animal, and with the strength 5 action, you can play two. In the upper left hand side of the animal card are the requirements that you need to meet in order to play the animal. The brown hexagon is the minimum size of enclosure needed for the animal. If there is an additional brown shape, this represents the special enclosure that the animal may be placed in instead. Below that is how much money you must pay. If you have a partner zoo from a continent that matches the animal's continent, shown in the upper right, reduce the cost by 3 money for each continent symbol shown. There may be additional requirements listed along the left side of the card. You will need to have them somewhere within your zoo in order to play the animal. If any of the symbols are unfamiliar, remember to check the icon overview sheet. After paying the cost, flip over the enclosure chosen to the full side. If instead you placed an animal in a special enclosure, place the number of your tokens from the supply as indicated on the animal card into the special enclosure. Now, place the animal card next to your zoo. The symbols in the upper right of the card are now present in your zoo and can aid in the requirements for future animals. Then, increase your appeal by the number shown along the bottom of the card. There may be additional rewards granted as well. Finally, many animals have an additional effect below its name. Simply follow the directions of the ability. Let's play this African bush elephant as an example. In order to play it, you need a size 5 enclosure and 36 money. You have a partner zoo in Africa, which reduces the cost by 3 for each symbol, so the cost is now 30. There is an additional requirement. You need to have upgraded your animal action card to level 2. Flip the enclosure to show that it is now occupied by the elephant, and place your card next to your zoo. You receive 10 appeal as shown, and you also increase your reputation by 1. Finally, read and execute the resistance ability. Notice that some animals can only be played with the level 2 animals action. The level 2 action also allows you to play animal cards from the display as long as it is within your reputation range. If you do, this increases the money cost equal to the folder number you take the animal from. The association action allows you to perform association tasks on the association board with your associates. The level of your association action determines the maximum value of your task. You must have at least one active associate on your notepad. Place the associate on the task on the association board that you want to take. If you already have one of your associates on the task, you must instead place two. If you already have three, you cannot do that task at this time. The two value task increases your reputation by two. With the three value task, take one of the available partner zoo tokens and place it on your zoo map. You cannot have duplicate partner zoos and you must place them on the lowest available space. If you cover a yellow bonus icon, receive the reward immediately. Gain a partner university with a four value task. Again, you cannot have duplicate partner universities and place them at the lowest available space. 
Also, gain any bonuses that you cover up. The value 5 task allows you to contribute to a conservation project. Take one of your tokens from the left side of your zoo map and place it on an empty space on one of the conservation cards. The icon next to the token chosen is granted immediately. You must meet the requirements of the card and you can only contribute to each of the projects once. Alternatively, you can play a conservation card from your hand to the top of the association board and contribute to it. Slide the existing conservation cards to the right and remove any cards that may move onto a space that exceeds the number of players. Either way, move up on the conservation track a number of spaces as indicated on the project. Whenever you reach a space on the conservation track that points to a yellow bonus icons, you will choose which bonus to receive. If you choose a bonus that is a token, remove the token from the board. When a player reaches the 10th space of the appeal track, all players must discard one of their final scoring cards. With an upgraded level 2 association card, you can perform multiple tasks as long as the total value of the tasks is less than or equal to the action strength. You can also perform the value 0 donation task once, pay money equal to one of the uncovered spaces and cover it with a token from your supply, then go up on the conservation track one space. The 12 money space is never covered. This task does not require an associate, but you must do one of the other tasks in order to do it. Also, you can now play a conservation project card from the display within your reputation range when doing the value 5 task by paying the folder number in money. Finally, you can now partner with your third and fourth zoos. The sponsor's action allows you to play sponsor cards from your hand. The cost is in the upper left hand corner of the sponsor card and must be less than or equal to the strength of your action. Play the card next to your zoo map and follow the instructions on the card for its effect. With the upgraded level 2 action, you can play multiple sponsor cards as long as their total cost does not exceed the strength of your action plus 1. You can also play cards from within your reputation range as long as you pay the cost of the folder. Alternatively, you can move the break token a number of spaces equal to the strength of the action and receive that amount in money. The money is doubled with the level 2 action. If the break token ever reaches the last space of the break track, the active player finishes their turn and receives an X token for triggering the break. You can never have more than 5 X tokens at a time. X tokens are used to increase the strength of an action by 1 for each token spent. You can increase an action's strength past 5 in this way. Then, all players will proceed with the break. Everyone discards down to their hand limit. Your hand limit starts at 3, but is increased to 5 if you have this partner university. Then, remove any tokens that may have been placed on action cards as a result of other played cards. All players retrieve their associates from the association board and replenish any missing partner zoos or universities. The bottom two cards on the display are discarded and the display is replenished per the usual rules. Income is now collected. First, gain money as indicated on your position on the appeal track. Then, collect money from each of your kiosks. A kiosk earns one money for each unique building, special enclosure, occupied enclosure, and pavilion adjacent to it. Also, collect income from any sources that show this symbol. It can be found most often on uncovered spots on the left side of your zoo map and sponsor cards. Now, return the break token to its starting spot and the next player takes their turn. If you cannot or do not want to do any of your actions, you can instead take an X token from the supply. Then, choose one action card and move it to the one position. When a player triggers the end of the game by having their appeal and conservation counters meet or pass one another, the player finishes their turn and all players take one final turn. After all turns are complete, players earn appeal or conservation points according to their final scoring cards and any other cards they may have played with an endgame icon. Your score is calculated by looking at your conservation counter and finding the lowest appeal number in that area. Subtract this number from your appeal value and this is your final score. The player with the highest score is the winner. If there is a tie, the player who contributed to the most conservation projects is the winner. If there is still a tie, those players share the victory. Remember to reference the glossary and icon overview sheet for any further clarifications, and I hope you enjoy playing Arc Nova.